Well, of course, everyone has uh, suffered from a headache uh, at a time or two, from one time to another. Uh, but imagine living with uh, migraines uh, for half your life. Uh, we're talking you know, migraines, not just everyday headaches, but migraines, debilitating uh, headaches. Uh, re- the reality is 3.2 million Americans are diagnosed with chronic migraines. Joining us this morning is Dr. Peter McAllister. He's Director of Clinical Research, the Headache Center at Associate Neurologists of Southern Connecticut and a Clinical Assistant Professor of Neurology at Yale University School of Medicine. Dr. McAllister, thanks very much for being with us today. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me on, Chris. Talk about uh, chronic migraine. This is it has to be uh, just an incredibly uh, debilitating uh, thing to be diagnosed with. I mean, you know, you, you must have uh, some incredible stories of, of patients who come to you. Uh, just it completely affects their lives. You're absolutely right, Chris. We're 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 talking about the uh, worst case of a crummy condition. So migraine, those who get two or three or four a month, is bad enough with the nausea, the throwing up, the light and sound sensitivity, calling in sick to work, laying in your bed with the shades pulled down. But there is a subset, and as you mentioned, it's about 3.2 million Americans at least, uh, cycle through this at least 15 days per month for four more hours per day, and at least half of those headaches have these associated features, such as the throbbing and this light and sound sensitivity. Uh, Although nobody dies of chronic migraine, uh, many of my patients think that's a mixed blessing. Uh, (laughs) Their their lives are on hold, and they have trouble taking care of their kids and holding down a job, and they're at increased risk of having depression or anxiety, and they're going to emergency departments. So it's a really difficult condition for them. It it certainly is easy to understand uh, why all of that would be the case. What is the cause uh, of this? I mean, is it known what causes it, what brings this on? Well, you know, there it's it's a very strongly genetic condition, migraine. Uh, there's about a 70% chance that somebody else in your family has this. If you look at chronic migraine, why would someone go from an infrequent sufferer to a very chronic uh, head pain condition? We have some risk factors. Uh, women, many more than uh, uh, men. Um, being overweight, less than thin people. Uh, people who don't get enough exercise or more at risk for chronic migraine. But the bottom line is we still don't know what all of the brain changes are on sort of a molecular level uh, that lead to this disabling condition. And it's hard to believe, but you say that there are those who have not uh, really been diagnosed properly uh, with this. Right. That's a real dilemma. Since most of us get a headache, there are plenty of folks out there that have not just headache but migraine, and not just migraine, but 15 or more headache days, and they're still trying to get by, and they're trying to treat themselves with over-the-counter medications or, you know, do something just to function. And, you know, they don't need to suffer alone. I mean, there's a study showing that up to 80% of people who really fit the diagnosis of chronic migraine don't even know they have it. So what they're missing out on is uh, treatment options. You know, there is now, since 2010, one FDA-approved treatment for chronic migraine, and that's Botox. And these patients who are not being diagnosed uh, haven't even gotten to the next step where they can see a headache specialist, a migraine specialist, and possibly benefit from Botox treatment. I thought that was really fascinating, the idea of Botox, because this would be the last thing that uh, I think most folks would realize uh, or or even imagine that uh, Botox would be able to, because this is something that we've all heard, this is uh, Botox that we've all heard of, uh, but actually being used uh, successfully to treat chronic migraines. Uh, how How does that work? (laughs) <laughs> well, you know, it, it's a it's an interesting story because the little known fact everyone knows it because the movie stars and the supermodels get mm-hmm. Botox, etc. Sure. Um, but Botox has been used for actual medical conditions uh, for a couple of decades, and we use it for stroke sufferers, and we use it for excessive sweating and for twisting of the neck and excessive eye blinking. So, it has some medical uses. Uh, we kind of tripped over the use of Botox in chronic migraine. Like a lot of things in science, it was discovered accidentally, uh, mostly from our cosmetic uh, patients who, you know, thought they looked terrific when they looked in the mirror, but also realized some of them Mm. just weren't getting the migraines that they used to get. Uh, Then 
a decade followed of all sorts of clinical studies, uh, culminating in October 2010 when the FDA uh, looked at all the data from the two large studies and approved Botox for the treatment of chronic migraine. Very interesting. Uh, so, I, like you said, most folks who have not been diagnosed are, are still trying to treat this themselves uh, by either lifestyle adjustments or over-the-counter medications. Does any of that work with any kind of success? Well, clearly lifestyle adjustments is key. Uh, if you're not getting enough sleep, you have to. If you have too much stress in your life, you have to learn how to manage it. You have to exercise, eat the right foods, avoid certain foods, drink enough fluids. That's, that's one of the keys, actually. Um, Over-the-counter medications are not generally a good idea for chronic migraine. If you have one or two migraines a month and you can quick get some over-the-counter medicine in as fast as possible, you stand a chance of helping your, your headache. Now, chronic migraine, if they start taking over-the-counter medications too much, the over-the-counter medication, believe it or not, actually causes headache. So we call that rebound or medication overuse. So one of the things we do when someone comes in and they're taking, you know, 40 or 50 Motrin or Excedrin a week is we get them off that, and that helps to clear up their headaches. Yeah, and, and we've heard stories uh, in the news about uh, uh, medication overdoses, uh, particularly acetaminophen and, and other uh, over-the-counter uh, overdoses, and I would imagine that those who are trying to treat themselves are at a increased risk for that as well if they're over-medicating. Uh, you're absolutely right, Chris. You know, don't think that just because you can go into the local pharmacy and buy it over-the-counter that a medication is uh, safe. Overuse of over-the-counter medicines can cause bleeding ulcers, can cause kidney dysfunction, can cause liver abnormalities. Uh, so it's important for these people to recognize that they have a medical condition, to get proper care from a neurologist or headache specialist, and get on the right treatment. So bottom line, what's the threshold uh, for if, if somebody has, uh, you know, suffers from, from headaches, migraines, uh, it, what's the threshold to actually go in and say to the, to the doctor and say, I think that this you know, may be something beyond just the, the everyday type of, uh, type of stuff? Sure. Here's the thing that drives most patients into my office, what we call functional disability. That is, they've had to miss something because of their headache. So if you were too much pain and nauseous and all to go into work, you need to get treated by a doctor. Simple as that. Uh, is there a, a website where folks can get more information? Uh, there sure is. Uh, the best website I can direct your listeners to is uh, called BotoxChronicMigraine.com. It's a very useful site with lots of information on it. And we will have a link from our webpage. Folks can check that out online. Again, Dr. Peter McAllister, the Yale University School of Medicine and uh, Associate Neurologist of Southern Connecticut. Dr. McAllister, thanks very much for joining us today. We appreciate it. It's been a pleasure, Chris. Thank you. Pleasure, Chris. Thank you.